Hi, my name is John, and I am a front-end developer at ActiveLamp. This past year, we had the opportunity to attend DrupalCon Los Angeles. At DrupalCon, we were introduced to a new testing toolkit called Shuv. Shuv is a visual regression toolkit that allows you to see visual regressions on your website directly in their web interface. Today, I am going to show you how to set up Shuv and get your first test written. To get Shuv installed into your project, you should navigate into the project that you want to install it to inside of Terminal. From within there, you would run the command npm install g mocha yo generate shuv. You may have to sudo this like I'm going to do right here. and once you enter your password, it should install. Once that's done, you might have seen some errors come up. You can either choose to update those if, if you think they are essential to update, or you can go ahead and ignore them. So next, you'll want to install Composer globally if you don't have it already installed. And then the second part of that is to move Composer into your user local bin directory. Now at this point you're going to want to install Brew or Homebrew if you don't have it already installed and you can download that with the instructions at brew.sh. But since I already have it installed I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. Next using Brew you'll want to install Graphics Magic running the brew install graphics magic command. And if you already have it installed, you'll get the, the warning like I already have, or that I got. Once you have the graphics magic installed, you want to go ahead and install your dependencies. And since we're using the yeoman generator, we want to use the npm install yo and we're going to go ahead and do that globally. And again, you may have to sudo this if you don't have the correct permission set up. Once that is done, you can start to install other dependencies, such as the node plugin file type. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and, and run the, the shuv command with the yeoman generator. Which we'll type in yo shuv, and then we'll designate our base URL. And since I'm going to be running this against activelamp.com, I'll go ahead and set activelamp.com as my base URL. and you can go ahead and select no so that it doesn't um, send stats to the yeoman generator. And Shu will run through its magic and it looks like I'm gonna have to rerun this with sudo. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the command to try to get the node packages to install again. Okay, so I think that I wound up getting it to work just by running npm install. And so now if you look inside of the directory inside of our active lamp Jekyll, you will see new folders such as this visual monitor folder, a shuv.yaml and a bhat directory and the directory that we care about the most is the visual monitor directory. If you look inside of there we have a node modules folder and a test folder with a package.json.
So we'll go ahead and CD into the visual monitor directory from within terminal. So within the test folder, we'll go ahead and take a look at the, the default test that the shoe generator produces. So here you can see that the first line we're going to go ahead and include or require the Shuv web driver. This is a specific file written for Shuv to integrate with WebDriver CSS. The next set of lines are some browser configs. And then we have some variables that are set up to be used within our test. The describe section is where our test starts, and the actual test is the it statement. At ActiveLamp, we like to move all of our configuration code into a separate file so that we're not repeating code in multiple tests. So I will go ahead and select all of the variables and the configuration and the require and copy that. And I'm going to deselect the require and delete everything from there. Outside of the test folder, inside of the visual monitor folder, I'm going to create a new file and call it configuration.js. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in all of the configuration that I just removed from the other file. At the end of this file, I'm going to go ahead and add a module dot export statement. Within that module export statement, I'm going to add in an object for each one of the variables above. Then we'll go we'll go ahead and save this file and go back to tests. Within tests, we need to reference our file that we just created. And then everywhere we make reference to those variables that we moved out of this file, we need to add config dot to each of those references. Once you have added the reference to the config file for each of your variables, we can go ahead and run this test. This test will run against the home page of your website and use the browser Chrome as well as the settings for the screen sizes that are set within this test. We're going to go back to Terminal and open up a new tab. Within that tab, since we are testing locally, I'm going to go ahead and run the PhantomJS web driver. Once the web driver is up and running, you can go back to your original terminal window, and from within the visual monitor directory, you can run selected caps equals Chrome Mocha. What this will do is it'll tell the testing framework that we want to run our test against Chrome using Mocha. Once the test is done running, you should be able to see that the name of the test matches the describe call, and you should also see how long the test took and whether it is passing or failing. This test is passing because we did not have any screenshots in there originally for the test to compare against. If you look inside of your WebDriver CSS folder, you will now see six new screenshots. Three of those screenshots are the baseline images, and three are the default images that Shuv creates when it runs the test. If you navigate to the WebDriver CSS folder inside of Finder, you can open up one of the images and see that it takes a really long screenshot of the website. Now I'm going to modify the test by adding some classes to the remove and hide parameters of my test. Once I add those classes, it will find those selectors and either remove or hide them, 
Removing will remove them from the DOM, and hide them will be like applying a CSS display none. Once I make those changes, I will go ahead and rerun my test. After the test finishes running, you will see that there is a visual regression, and it will give you a link to the app.shuv.io screenshot so that you can compare the previous baseline to the regression. So if we log in to shuv.io and go into the visual regression settings, you can filter by repository. You'll be able to click on that commit, and within that page, you will see the differences for each image. You can use the slider to slide back and forth on the image and see where the regression is happening. From within the Shuv interface, you can switch between the slidable diff and the colored diff. This would be familiar to you if you have ever used Wraith. Within the interface, you are able to select and download which images you want to save to your repository. You may also link your repository and be able to commit directly to that branch. That's it for now. If you'd like more videos like this, please visit activelamp.com. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and comment.